Hi, everybody. I am really glad that you chose to listen to the story. I have a book for us today called Monarch Butterfly of Astor Way. And it's just a simple story. It kind of mixes science um, with the story of a butterfly. And then after you listen to the story, I've created a short video where we can recreate the story doing some mindful movement and basically yoga poses. So sit back and relax. And here comes the story. Monarch Butterfly of Astor Way. Bright August sunshine. I still can't get this right, guys. Here we go. <laughs> and there. Bright August sunshine fills the backyard of the White House halfway down Astor Way. All is quiet except for the scritch scratch of a fox squirrel and the buzz of his honeybees. Under the rail of the shady gazebo, a new butterfly clings to her chrysalis case. She slowly unfurls her crumpled scaled wings. They fan out around her, orange and black and quiver as she gathers strength. She takes a few steps on her stiff little legs. It's really nice artwork. Then whoosh, as light as a whisper, Monarch lifts off, leaving behind the chrysalis that sheltered her during her change from a fat caterpillar to a slim butterfly. She drifts over the milkweed plants she has munched on, back in her caterpillar days. She flutters to cornflowers and zinnia and sips sweet, juicy nectar from each. Monarch floats past the white house, over the white fence, and down Astor Way. She's beginning her long, danger-filled journey. She will fly south and west to spend her winter in Mexico, hundreds of miles away. It's pretty incredible how they can travel such a far distance. The sunlight begins to fade. Monarch lands on a willow tree and hooks her tiny claws into the bark. Without the warmth of the sun, her body becomes too stiff to fly. She, huddled close, she huddles close to four other butterflies. They fold their wings to wait out the night. Late the next morning, Monarch basks on a sunlit rock. Warm, she flits to sunflowers, then visits some goldenrod. She sees their bright yellow colors with her bulgy compound eyes and detects their scent with her knobby need antenna. She tastes the flowers with her sensitive feet before she uncoils her proboscis and sips nectar. As if she's drinking through a small straw, she gets water from puddles in the same way. So it's almost like a straw that she can put down into the puddles. And if you're wondering about these slips that are on here, this is for the yoga poses for the next activity. So just ignore the post-its. Monarch flutters and soars, growing stronger each day. She flies fast and far. Sometimes wings outspread, she spirals up and up on the currents of air. Then like a glider, she sails south on high speeding winds. At times, other monarchs join her. Together, they skim over the hills and lakes, towns, cities, forest fields. At night and on gray, rainy days, monarch roosts. It's kind of a cool picture. One cool, drizzly day, monarch clings to a fence post, her folded wings hiding her colors. From high in a tree, a hungry blue jay spots her and dives towards her dark shape. Monarch struggles to fly, but she's too chilly and stiff. She drops to the ground. When the blue jay sees her spread wings, it swerves and swoops off. It is worn by Monarch's bold black and orange colors. This butterfly is not good to eat. Monarch creeps back to the fence and hides under the rail to wait until the weather turns sunny once more. The next day is fine and she takes to the air. One balmy Sunday, September afternoon, Monarch reaches Washington, D.C. She floats over a green park, past a red stone castle, and toward flowers growing along the side walkway. She has come upon the Smithsonian Institute's 
Butterfly garden. Butterflies of many kinds flutter and fan their wings. Monarchs drift down and land their soft yellow patch on a soft yellow patch. But it's not a flower, it's a sun hat. The child under the hat sits very still. Monarch, monarch rests there for a moment, then flits to some purple joe pie weed. She stays and feeds a long time in the butterfly garden before she sets off again in south and west. Can you see that this is a, a hat? On a breezy day in October, Monarch feeds beside, a, feeds beside a wide Texas highway with hundreds of other Monarch butterflies. Cars and trucks whiz by. Suddenly, a gust from a van sweeps her into the road. Monarch flaps hard in the swirling air. A huge truck zooms close and a strong blast of air tosses her high, then tumbles her into the grass at the edge of the road. Monarch picks herself up, lifts off, and soon leaves that busy highway behind. Monarch flies on day after day. Finally, in mid-November, she reaches mountains in south-central Mexico. She finds her way to a forest of oyamel trees. There, she joins millions of other monarchs to overwinter until spring. They cluster so closely, the trees look as if they meet, might be sprouting butterflies. Monarch finds herself a spot on a tree trunk and clings tight to the bark. She rests all winter long using slight energy. She stirs now then to bask or to feed, but only when the winter sun warms her enough to flit from her roosting place. Snow falls, storms come and go, a few branches break, but hardy monarch survives. I'm sure plenty of the monarchs don't survive, but the one in our story is. And at last, warm spring sunshine comes to the mountain. Then clouds of butterflies lift like smoke puffs from the oyamel tree. Monarch, too, stirs flies and seeks nectar in the early wildflowers. As her strength is renewed, she flutters and swoops with the others. Sometimes she and a partner swirl high in the sky in a spiraling mating dance. Soon the butterflies sense that it's time to head north. Monarch's body is heavy with eggs. She stops often to rest and to feed. Whenever she finds a milkweed plant, she lays her creamy eggs on its leaves, one tiny egg at a time. When the monarch reaches North Texas, her long journey is over. She is eight months old, very old for a butterfly, and it's time for her life to end but it's also time for a new life to begin. Monarch's eggs will hatch a few at a time, about a week from the day that they were laid. The little caterpillars will eat milkweed for a month, maybe longer, and when they become big and fat, they will form a chrysalis around themselves. Sheltered inside, they will change into a new monarch butterfly. So the cycle continues. The new monarchs will fly north, sipping nectar from flowers, mating and laying their eggs on milkweed plants. All along the way, eggs will hatch into caterpillars that become butterflies that keep traveling north, leaving their egg behind. More new butterflies will fly on until by late August, one of, Mar one of monarchs' great, great, great grandchildren might begin life in the sunny backyard on Astor Way, just like monarch did. And that is the end. All right, so what we're going to do in the next video that you'll see in the middle of my slide is we're going to recreate this book by doing yoga poses um, that go with the story. So I hope you join me, and thanks a lot for listening.